Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm gonna show you 10 Southern Living Plant Collection plants that are really showing off in the winter garden here in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is actually kind of hard to pick. We probably have 30 plus pieces. And I would say, you know, the only reason I wouldn't show about 10 of them is maybe because they're deciduous, like this Vitex has lost its leaves for the winter or this Wygela has lost its leaves for the winter. So, you know, they're dormant. So that takes down about 10 of them. There's probably at least these about 20 that look fantastic out here. So we're actually having a hard time figuring out what 10 we're gonna cover. But let's jump right in with this Stella Ruby Magnolia because this thing really looks amazing right at the beginning of January, um, you know, right at the beginning of 2023. It's got flower buds along the stem, which will open up later in the season. This is a banana shrub hybrid. Uh, it gets fragrant uh, flowers on it. And whether it flowered or not, Look how nice this thing looks in the winter garden. You know, it's full right down to the ground. It's super upright and slender. We're on a small lot here in Raleigh, North Carolina on 0.19 acres. And uh, to get something large and evergreen, something that really show off as a centerpiece in a bed like this, a lot of times that's gonna take up a big footprint on the ground. And this one is just upright and narrow. It shows off. Um, look, it, it's come through serious cold already this winter. What a great looking plant. Next up is this Miss Lemon Abelia. We have Radiance Abelia in the front garden. This is uh, Miss Lemon. And then there's one called Kaleidoscope as well in the Southern Living Plant Collection. This is probably my favorite. It holds its color the best in the wintertime, meaning that it's, you know, it's green with a yellow edge in the summer and it's green with a yellow edge in the winter. On the newest growth from the end of the season, you'll get a little bit of that orange kind of color in it. But the rest of the older growth on the plant just stays the same year round. These bloom from about June 1st all the way through summer and into fall. Pollinators absolutely love them. The flowers are white and it's against a variegation, so they're not super showy, but the bees know they're there and uh, they're working them pretty hard. We'll get after this pretty hard um, toward the end of uh, winter. We're going to cut this thing down. The way we go about pruning these is we'll take a limb that's sticking up taller than everything else and we'll just chase it all the way down into the middle of the plant and cut it off there or very low in the plant and so it keeps its form and it'll just keep this low doming habit uh, 12 months out of the year and uh, just great plant. I usually show off this Juliet I usually show off this Juliet Clara in peak summer because the new growth on it is really really bright when it's actively growing during the season but I actually like this color that it becomes in the winter too. The edges of the leaves uh, get a little bit of uh, orange uh, in the coloration rather than yellows or whites. Uh, some of the, the new growth that was happening toward the end of the season turns this reddish color. Every leaf on this plant looks like it was individually painted to me. You know, a lot of variegated plants, you know, the variegation is similar, similar, similar. There's not two leaves on this plant that look alike. This is a great plant for the corner of a foundation, great plant for screen. We got this chain link fence back here behind us. This thing's gonna get big and ever, you know, evergreen and, and, and block out this fence in the next few years. Variegated plants, not as quick, not as fast growing necessarily as their green counterparts, but um, it's starting to get some momentum on it now. It's been in the ground about two years from something that was pretty small. So I think this next year we'll really see it take off and this is how it looks, you know, year round. So honorable mention to the mountain snow Pieris that's budded up, uh, ready to bloom. We'll start to see color on it uh, sometime later in January. Uh, it'll have those little uh, white, white flowers on it. And uh, sliding around to the right, another uh, honorable mention are the Mahonia that are in the landscape. This is Marvel Mahonia. We also have Soft Caress. Looking fantastic. You'd think I'd pick a flowering plant if I'm picking <laughs> great looking plants in January. There's one. Uh, but I'm going to go with this uh, Mojo Pittosporum uh, for sure. This thing is just such a fantastic variegated, low growing Pittosporum. These have not been pruned once. These three pieces right here, they just look great. Uh, we had some really, really cold air on them maybe two weeks ago and right on the edge of the leaf on a, on a, on a few of them there, you can, you can see where it didn't like that night, you know, those couple nights all that much, but no big deal. Came through it like a champ. These just shine back here in this landscape. When, it, when, when we re-mulch, when that dark brown mulch is against that variegation, just looks fantastic. The weeping Japanese maple with the red purplish foliage weeping over them looks fantastic. Another couple honorable mentions, I'll say, that we're not picking gardenias and we have some great looking uh, gardenias out here from the Southern Living Plant Collection. This one's Diamond Spire. 
And we also have some great looking Laura Petalum, which I talk about too much in video. So I figured I'd not talk about the Laura Petalum, but we have Purple Daydream, Emerald Snow, great looking Laura Petalum in the collection. If I was gonna do this list one through 10, one being my favorite, it would probably be this Nightlight Cameo Cypress. This thing, it's just looked fantastic since the day we put it out here. Uh, this thing is getting 15 hours of direct sun. I wouldn't recommend that if you were just planting it out in open space, but it's got other things around it. Uh, it's well mulched, you know, it's underplanted with some flowering things, that kind of thing. So not necessarily a plant that I'd put in 15 hours of direct sun, but this one's working out great and it is a shining, I mean, just it just glows out here in the front garden. You put something darker behind it with a slightly different leaf texture, like this Leanne Clara, which was also, was near near our top 10 uh, for this video as well. It's super soft to the touch. You just wanna do this once you've done it once. This, this can get three to four feet in height by three to four feet in width, but it's easy to keep it smaller than that. In the late winter, I could shear this to whatever size I want. It'll come back out from that. But again, you just can't stop touching it. Soft to the touch and just glows in the winter garden. We have a lot of one of a kinds uh, in this garden, just one of this and one of that. We do have a grouping of three or five here or there, but uh, for the most part, it's a lot of ones because we're plant collectors. One we do have two of though, is this Dragon Prince Cryptomeria. Dragon Prince is similar to Globosa nano, which uh, lots of people know. It's a little dwarf Japanese cedar uh, in lots and lots of landscapes because it's drought tolerant, sun tolerant, tough soil tolerant, sand, clay, kind of whatever, really, really tough, a uh, little round globe ornamental plant. Dragon Prince is that, but even more compact, really incredibly compact. Again, another conifer that's kind of soft to the touch. So, you know, uh, it doesn't bite you back. I can sit here and do this to it. These are hardy and most people watching can grow these cryptomeria. In colder regions, they'll take on a little bit more of an amber hue in the wintertime. Uh, here it stays greener. We have had some cold on it that's gotten it a little more amber than usual, uh, but beautiful in the winter garden. And again, another conifer that you just can't stop touching. This is Clean Sweep Snowbank Indian Hawthorn. This is a very disease resistant Indian Hawthorn, low doming habit, all the great things we love about dwarf uh, Indian Hawthorns where they're low compact evergreen plants, the new foliage on it's kind of got a reddish hue to it. It flowers with white, slightly fragrant flowers or pretty fragrant flowers actually. Um, again, very, very compact. It'll get little black berries where the flowers were if you don't do any pruning between the flowering and the uh, uh, and that time of year late in the summer. Incredibly compact habit and this one was bred for disease resistance. One of the things we have in our dwarf Indian hawthorns is a lot of leaf, leaf spot issues and this is the cleanest Indian hawthorn I've ever seen. Just beautiful low compact evergreen that happens to flower as well. Again there's a lot of honorable mentions here. Uh, the Juliet Clara, and the, I, I did show the Leanne Clara over there. We've got other Clara. We've got Dogwoods and, and uh, Little Bonnie Spirea, and but uh, there's a lot to choose from out here with these great looking plants uh, in the wintertime from the Southern Living Plant Collection. But again, this was a list of 10, right? <laughs> so number nine is this Golden Oakland Holly. We've got this one in a container. We have another one in the ground uh, in the back garden as well. Great screening plant, great corner foundation plant stays narrower than Nellie Stevens Holly does so you know I think it fits better if you're putting something on the corner of your foundation again we love this thing and elevated in this container at some point it's got to come out of this container something else will go in it and uh, this one can go uh, in the ground it's self uh, self fruiting it'll have the red have red berries on it just like any other Holly the variegation in it's very very stable uh, it looks, it just looks fantastic. It shines out here uh, in the garden. Again, perfect upright columnar habit without ever having to touch it. Last up, number 10 on the list is the entire Camellia collection from the Southern Living Plant Collection. I'm not gonna try to narrow this down. Just right here, we've got uh, white shishi, pink shishi. Maybe this is white shishi and this is pink shishi. This is white shishi, I remember now. White shishi, pink shishi. Uh, which are dwarf. These stay very small. Uh, behind it, we've got one called Crimson and Clover. Uh, in the back garden, we have October Magic Ruby, which we've shown. October Magic Orchid, which has a, kind of a two-tone flower. We've got a Camellia Japonica called Early Wonder that actually blooms in the fall uh, instead of more typical January, February, March. It will bloom into January, February, March too. If, once it gets, once the cold weather stops it, whatever buds are left on it will open 
at the regular time, Camellia japonicas are blooming. That's the longest blooming Camellia uh, we have is that early wonder. There are others too. Um, uh, uh, October Magic Inspiration, uh, we've shown on the channel before, great looking variegated flower on that Camellia sasanqua. And uh, others as well, I think we've shown Alabama Beauty before, which is probably one of the faster growing Camellia sasanquas if you're looking to use Camellias as a screen, because Camellias can be slower than other plants, but they're, they're in all shapes and sizes. Foliage looks great. They bloom from fall, you know, past Christmas into early spring if there's any flower, residual flower buds left on them, especially the Camellia japonicas uh, that are in the collection. So there you go. Uh, that's narrowing it down to, uh, to, to 10 plus a few honorable mentions along the way. So these things really stand out. They really look great year round. I wanted to shoot them here in January uh, so you could see, you know, but, you know, when it's easy to show something off in May or June or July and have it looking great. But here we are in January and they, after a serious cold snap, uh, looking fantastic. Thanks for watching guys.